that our um, host teachers are ready to lead us towards their uh, individual classrooms. We will be there from uh, 10.30 to 11.15, and at 11.15 we'll meet back here. That's the play part. Are you going to use Canvas oh. for that? Yeah. Let's this one here okay so uh, what we when I was in the classroom I saw that there were a variety of students using a lot of different te technologies so they were using items like Google slide draw IO uh, scratch um, they were using the Nimbus which allowed them to take screenshots and um, audio which for some students is very helpful especially when they might str struggle with fine motor or being able to record their learning now how do you think how do you think this is going to look when you present it to the students like we like go on, we'll go on one and we'll tell them how it works and stuff and how to do it okay so are they going to be able to like interact on the chromebook or do you have yeah, to do so, all the work so like we'll tell them to click that and we'll tell them the idea is to teach the primary students um, and their peers about transformational geometry um, in a sort of a convention format. So the other students will come and visit and rotate through the classes um, and, and learn the proper uh, mathematical language for translation and uh, reflections and um, rotations. Translation. Okay, can you show me a translation? Okay. You ready? Translation and rotation. Rotation and show us your reflection. <laughs> The nice part is we're focusing on collaboration and critical thinking, so they're working on this um, project with a team member um, and also with other teams. So if they're having a hard time with something, they can bounce ideas off of each other. I like taking what I've learned in the past and helping others learn it in a different way because I used to learn, because the way I learned it, we like we didn't always use the Chromebooks for it, so I usually just learned it off watching a video from the Bright Link no activities to do on Chromebooks, so I think it's nice to teach um, kids that way. So you guys came up with them or the teacher gave you ideas to play? On another project we had to do like math games, we looked at them and s said how um, what ones were good or not and then we got them off. Yeah. Oh. Uh, we could use, uh, so then you had to write the games yeah. and then from that you guys came up yeah. with your games yeah. for your for your project. Fashion designers use it to make the same side of like a shirt and then video game designers use it to make Create, create characters and worlds. Yeah. What we're doing is we're using the Draw.io app and there's like, we're building kind of like a work area and so there's like a desk and almost a garbage can and we're going to teach them about like rotations and flips and translations. Uh, I'm just using it to know how much, how well I am explaining it and if they actually understood what I was saying or if they didn't understand. So yeah, that's what I have here. Based on this information, what will you do with that then? I guess I could, if I have more than one class and more than one day, I could also change what I have and change the words I'm using to help them. Together with the other teachers, we've been humming and hawing about how, how can we make this exciting and um, and what can we introduce to them that would help them actually, you know, get into the math. And so we thought, why don't we do some sort of um, like a fun day where they get to be peer teachers. I always find that if they um, have that role of being um, a teacher, that they take it more seriously. Um, and they're always, they, they care what other students think about their work. Before I might have spent a lot of time um, doing tasks and work around just that language. Like every kid in there knows exactly what a rotation is. We didn't spend a lot of work on it. We didn't spend a lot of time on that. Not as much as I normally would. At the, at the beginning, we were like, where's this going? Like, like what does this mean for my teaching? I'm maybe a little nervous about it. You mentioned digital. We're, we're all getting our hands into it, but it's like, what's expected of me? How do I? But it's been it's been really tremendous. Um, just seeing that idea of that it, the classroom doesn't exist in this little silo with just us. It's this bigger community. So by inviting other people to participate in the classroom, um, having the kids access the digital. So it, it almost ends up being a byproduct of them using the tools and doing this project. Is that they're experts on on using that transformational geometry language. Whereas before, I would spend three weeks ham trying to hammer that language into their heads.
very prescriptive, very structured in ways that I used to teach, that we were taught how to teach. And now it's really truly as teacher as facilitator. So getting out of my comfort zone, learning the tools almost at the same time as they are, and truly taking a step back and letting them, I wouldn't say take over, but just branch out a little bit with my support. Um, well, me and Karel, we're doing a project on a marine biologist. Um, um, well, there's nothing really to explain about it, except that we're um, that they use trans transformational geometry, and they use it um, like with making like the cage using like volume um, in the oceans. I, I, I love um, the ocean so I cho that's why I chose it. Really truly what's impressed me is the students don't and I've, I've had fear of this had come back to me saying you're supposed to be teaching us you know why don't you know this not a one not one syllable has come out in that way. You can translate a lot of shapes and put pictures in it so you can create small problems. Yeah. And explain some stuff. So, the object of our problem is you're an architect and you're trying to design a good room layout. So, you have to figure out how you would move the items to the proper spots yeah. to get the best layout. They are more than eager to really uh, take on the role of being a leader and showing us, showing us how to do things. So, I'm, I'm in charge, but <laughs> in a, in a class management sense, but really they're in charge of their own. Really quickly I could make a, reg a regular polygon, I could make a square, and then I could make a vector. I feel like there's more exploring in this than on an actual paper. It feels like we like everybody's been doing paper forever and we need something yeah. new. The digital tools that have become available to us have allowed me uh, personally to, to change my way and allow me to um, explore ways with the students to facilitate their learning. And it truly has been, uh, you know, very, very, uh, very engaging for me personally as a teacher. And I think I see it in my students too. Okay, so we're working on a project. What if the ozone layer was disintegrated? So here it has, has like CFCs, and CFCs are fluorofluorocarbons down here, and they rise into the stratosphere where they are broken down by UV rays. We learned that there's a lot more pollution that can be caused, and even a little thing can just uh, cause a giant reaction. We looked at what, is, what does deep learning mean. We felt that they needed to have choice. Um, they also needed to buy into whatever it is they were doing so that they could look deeper and they could, they could uh, come up with some of... We wanted them in, in the end to learn how to learn. You're at you're 11.50 and it'll take 22 hours to get there. So it'll be 9.50 a.m. the next day, Thursday. Then since the time difference is 12 hours and 30 minutes, you can add uh, 12 hours and 30 minutes and you get to 10.20 p.m. on Thursday. We were asking them, what, what is it you're learning? You might be learning about that particular job or how they use transformational geometry, but in the end, you're learning to they're, they were you know, able to somewhat articulate that they're learning how to um, learn deeper. So it's being able to propose your own problems and then come up with ways to solve them. And then we decided, well, you know what, this, a slide is just a slide, right? So we wanted to say, make sure people were listening, so we decided to put a quiz. Because you have kids in grade four that, that their level of thinking is way above, and kids in grade five that are are still struggling with the basic concepts, right? Did you have a success criteria? I find that if you want students to see the connections between all the different strands, you have to do the deep learning piece, and the technology is just the tool that you're using in order to have that deep learning. Happen. The kids are, are right on board. They, they, they look forward to the opportunities to use the Chromebooks and to use the digital tools to work with each other and uh, it's just opened up so many different avenues. Uh, I'm just constantly amazed by their creativity and their, their abilities um, to, to think outside the box. So there wasn't that, you know, when you, the, the element of, oh, I failed and I can't move forward. They didn't seem to have, be bogged down by that. It was just, well, okay, well, I'll try again. 
I like the collaborative community aspect of it, and that I'm not alone in doing that is really exciting. So I think if, if more schools could do things like this and get their whole staff involved and seeing that I don't need to come to the table, I've got a certain set of gifts, I don't need to come to the table knowing everything because, you know, maybe this colleague will come with that missing puzzle piece and the idea that, you know, we can create this mosaic together is uh, kind of awesome to see it in action.